Hi, and welcome to E5, a conversation about efficiency. So efficiency is really a comparison between um, the amount of work that you get out of a machine um, and the amount of work that you have to put into a machine to make it work. Um, there's a couple of types of simple machines we're going to talk about. Um, the first one we should talk about is by far the simplest, and that is just a ramp. Which will look like that. You can use ramps in a lot of ways. Frequently they're used just to load trucks. You can drive a pulley up them. Um, yeah, it's the most obvious example I can think of. Um, so a ramp. So what you get out of a ramp is you get an object, say a box, at a height. Um, we could call this um, MGH, or we can simplify it even further. Just we get out some potential energy. We get something to a height. Um, and what we have to put in is we have to push it all the way up the ramp. Um, EP is what we get out of it, and we have to put some work in, um, which would be an FD in this case. Um, another type of simple machine um, looks like a ramp to start with, but if we just take a kind of stick or, a, or a, a board and we add a fulcrum, what we have is a lever. And what happens with a lever is you will push down on this longer side normally, but not always. Um, you push down on that longer side and it will go up. So what you end up with is something that looks like that. And so if there was a box here, it would now be up in the air. Um, you push it all the way down. And what you'll notice again is what we get out of this is we have lifted Oh, I don't want to do red. I want a different color. We have lifted this box up. Um, so what we get out again is we get EP out. We get some potential energy out. And you'll notice what we had to do to make this happen is we had to apply a, we had to do some work to get this to function. So, and again, our work is going to be a force applied over distance. Um, we are going to talk about a third type of machine as well. Well, I might as well do all four right here. The third type of work um, simple machine we're going to talk about is a pulley. So a pulley is a system of ropes that looks kind of like this. And what we'll do with a pulley is we will pull on the loose end of a pulley, and what will happen is we'll probably attach a little object to that pulley. That object will go up. Um, and what you'll notice with a pulley, and we'll call this start, I guess I could have done start and finish diagrams with all of them, would have made a bit more sense. Start, finish, what you will get is that object lifted, uh, something like this. There's our object lifted um, up. And it's just used to lift an object as well. And you'll notice how we applied a force to that end. We pulled a bunch of rope down and we ended up getting this box again um, up in the air. So what we got out of it, oh, I tried to switch to blue. Let's try again. I like this blue bit. We have an EP out. We got some type of potential energy out and we had to pull on that rope. So to make this thing function, we had to um, put some work in, um, which in this case is just a force times a distance. You'll notice how with all three of these things, the distance we have to apply the force over is bigger than what we get out of it. And so I intentionally drew the pulley like that with a really long rope as well. And so the question is, why do we use machines? What some people will say is actually reduces the work, um, and that's not true. That's a bit of a trick answer. That's not actually what happens. What happens is you can apply a smaller force. So all of these allow you to apply a smaller force. So if, for example, you are using a ramp and you want to lift a thousand kilogram object, you might not have a tool, your body included, that can lift a thousand kilogram object straight up. It's just not possible. What you do have is a machine or your body or something that can push with a smaller force so you can then slide it up the ramp. But then you have to apply that force over a longer distance. Due to conservation of energy, 
you will always have to put more work in than you get out. Always. So our efficiency our efficiency is a ratio between the work we get out and the work we put in. And its units are percent. So this is the way the equation is normally written, except I'll show you in the examples. I usually ignore this 100% while I'm doing calculations. It just makes things a little bit more complicated. I think just about everybody in grade 11 can convert decimals to percents in their head. Um, so I don't think it's a really super helpful step. So again, due to conservation of energy, you will always have to put more work in work in will always be greater than work out. Always. Um, as a matter of fact, the work in will never even be equal to the work out. In reality, you will never get a machine that is perfectly efficient. You will always lose energy in some way, shape, or form. If it makes a sound at all, you're losing energy. If it deforms the thing at all, you're losing energy. Um, so there's no way that work in will ever equal work out. So work in will always be bigger than work out, which means your efficiency will always be less than 100%. Always. Um, the fourth thing that we talked about, um, and I'll just do an overview here, and then I think I've got four examples. Um, but I might as well introduce it now, is a motor. So motors can either be gas or they can be electric. Um, and a motor will supply usually power. A motor will supply power. And then we can use this power analysis that I'm going to do for any other type of machine as well. Um, but motors are usually given um, a wattage rating. Motors come with a power rating. They will say this is a 1,000 watt motor or this is a 30 watt motor. Um, this rating is the power needed to function. i.e. the power in. Just a quick little derivation down here. Um, efficiency is usually a curly F or curly E with two Fs, EFF -F is equal to work out over work in. But just as an aside, power is equal to work over time. If I substitute um, or therefore, work is equal to power times time. So my efficiency formula could also be uh, my power out times time divided by my power in times time. And the amount of time on top and bottom should be the same. So we get that efficiency, and this is most useful for motors, but could be used with the other three examples as well. Um, the efficiency can also be calculated with power out over power. Let's look at a couple of examples. Example one, a pulley is used to lift the world's largest pineapple, 28 kilograms, to a height of three meters. If 10 meters of rope is pulled using an 85 Newton force to lift the pineapple, what is the efficiency of the pulley? So this is a bit of a mouthful. Um, if you want to, feel free to set up a little compound pulley um, to pull things up and down. Not everyone will have that, but I bet there is a ton of YouTube videos out there that can show how they work. I am going to uh, draw my little one here. The same way, a rope would go kind of around two of them. This would be a two to one pulley, um, not necessarily the most important. And you would pull on this. What you need to know about pulleys is you have to pull more rope through or more string or cable through 
then the amount of height that the object goes up. So this exact one that I have, you're pulling on one strand of rope, but it goes down and then back up, which means if I pulled two meters of rope through, it would go up one meter. Um, so this isn't an exact pulley that's being represented in the question. Um, but you have to pull more rope through than it actually drags the object up. So when we look at this equation, my efficiency is equal to work out over work in. A reminder from power that work can be calculated in three different ways. If you're applying a force over a distance, you're going to equal, you're going to use the FD. If you are changing the height of something, you're going to use the change in potential energy. If you are accelerating something to a velocity, you're going to use change in kinetic energy. In this case, what we get out of it is we have lifted an object. So we are going to use delta EP to calculate the change in potential energy of us lifting an object. And what we had to put into this is we had to apply a force over a distance. So my efficiency, my delta EP is an mg, maybe I'll take up two lines for this, an mgh final minus mgh initial divided by FD. If it's to a final height, our initial height will be zero. So then we get that our efficiency is equal to MGH over FD. So our efficiency of this particular pulley is the mass of our pineapple, 28. G is 9.8. The height is going to be 3 divided by my force which is 85 times the distance that force is applied, which is 10 meters. If we plug it into a calculator, we should get that this pulley is 96.8% efficient. Um, and I'm just gonna back that up again. What we'll actually get if we plug this into our calculator is a 0 0.968. And notice how I've dropped that times 100%. Uh, what we want is we want to express this decimal as a percent. To express it as a percent, we just move the decimal over twice, 96.8% efficient. Let's look at example number two. The world's largest pumpkin, 1,190 kilograms, is pushed up a ramp that is 67% efficient. If a 1,340 force is applied over a distance of six meters, to what height does the pumpkin get? So let's start by drawing a ramp. There is a ramp. So a ramp is apply a ramp is a height. So this would be the height of the ramp. We get to a certain height. And this long ramp portion would be the distance. So this would be our six meters. And our height is what we're looking for. To what height? Um, again, if we are looking at our efficiency equation, we're looking at work out over a work in. What we get out of this is we get a pumpkin. We're going to draw a gray pumpkin. A pumpkin A pumpkin uh, to a height. That's the whole point of using a ramp is to get something up to a height or sometimes to get down from a height. Um, and what so what we get out of it is an MGH and what we put into it is a force times displacement. I simplified that MGH because the derivation is exactly the same as the previous example. So our efficiency is then going to be our mass 1190 times 9.8. Oh, I'm not quite done because it's different than the last question. I'm trying to solve for H. So my efficiency is equal to MGH over FD to solve for H, I get an uh, efficiency times F times D divided by MG. So my H is going to be equal to my efficiency, which is 0 0.67 times the force I apply, 1,340 over the distance, which I think was six meters. 
divided by the mass, 1,190 times, the, times G, 9.8. So again, notice how I took that efficiency and I turned it back into a decimal in my hand. So our final answers are going to be efficiencies, but if we're using them in calculations, just turn them into a decimal in your head and then plug them in straight as a number. Um, if I plug all of that into my calculator, I think I get a 0 0.46191. So my height is going to be a 0 0.462 meters. Example three, a lever is 89% efficient, is going to be used to lift the world's largest cabbage, 63 kilograms. The intent is to get the cabbage to a height of three meters using a 10 Newton force. Over what distance must this force be applied? So we've got a little fulcrum here, which is just something that the lever rests on. And then we've got what turns out to be a really long lever. And then we've got our, our cabbage down the end. In order to make a lever work, you're going to push down on the end, and then in response, the cabbage will lift up. So when we are looking at our efficiency formula, we work out overwork in. Again, what we get out of this is the cabbage to a height. And what we put into this is a force over a distance. Um, what I'm trying to find now is the distance that the force must be applied. Uh, notice how with these MGHs and the FDs, the Hs and the Ds can get confusing because they're both kind of displacements. I like to keep them as distinctly separate. It helps me figure out in my head what's going on. Um, if I solve for D, I think I get an MGH uh, over the force times the efficiency. So my displacement is going to be uh, 63 times 9.8. I want to get to a height of 3 meters. The force I have to apply is 10 and my efficiency. 89% is a 0 0.89. Take all those guys, I plug them into my calculator, and I get that the distance we have to push that lever down is 208 meters. I think if I did this calculation, if I was trying to do this in reality, I'd be like, wow, we're going to have to find a bigger force to use because 208 meters is not a realistic number. Um, our fourth and final example. A. Oh, I just felt this. Give me one second to get the things back the way we need them. There we go. A 50,000 watt motor is used to accelerate the world's largest watermelon, which is 159 kilograms, from rest. The watermelon starting from rest gets up to 23 meters per second in six seconds. What is the efficiency of the motor? So since it gave us a power in the question, it's the only time we're going to do it. If they give us a power in the question, <coughs> then we're going to use the power out over power in form of the equation. If they don't mention power, don't think about power. Um, so power out, and I might do these as separate equations. My power out is going to be my work out over time. And I say, what do I get out of this? Well, I get a watermelon moving really fast. If it's moving really fast, we changed its kinetic energy in an amount of time. My power out is then going to be a half mv final squared minus a half mv naught squared. Initial velocity zero, so that term just goes away, which is nice. I forgot about it divided by t. And now I have a reasonable expression to calculate my power out, which I'm going to substitute back into my original equation. My efficiency is equal to a half mvf squared over t over power in. If you wanted to do this in many steps, you could. 100%, you could take the power, the numbers you have for power out, calculate what the power out is, divide it by the power in, and that'd be fine. But you know me, I like to do my algebra, and I think it's great practice to do so. 
And here we have a gross compound fraction, and there's no better spot to practice your algebra. This is the same as a half mvf squared over t divided by power n. If you remember your <coughs> fraction laws, this is a half mvf squared over t times 1 over pn. And this half is also bugging me. I'm going to put that on the bottom. That's a 2. So my efficiency is going to be equal to mvf squared over 2t times my power n. So my efficiency is equal to my mass, which is 159 times 23 squared divided by 6. Sorry, 2 times 6 times 50,000. And I think I've spotted a typo on my piece of paper I'm stealing my answers from. So I'm going to plug this one in. Uh, we're going to go back there. We're going to plug some things in. Here I have 152 times 23 squared divided by 2 times 6 times 50. One, two, three. And I get 0 0.1340. Four, zero. I think there was a one and then a three, 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 three. Which as a percent, which is how we want to record efficiencies, is a 13.4% efficient. I feel like it's rather appropriate that our efficiency of accelerating a, a world's largest watermelon is incredibly low. Um, appropriate, if you ask me. Thank you for watching, and I just wanted to remind you guys a couple of keys for success. Uh, number one, you got to do the practice questions. If the things I'm saying make sense, that's phenomenal, but you still have to practice and make some mistakes on your own. Um, and that goes along with number two. If you get stuck, uh, ask me questions. Get in touch. Uh, write me an email. Make an appointment. Or leave a comment on the YouTube video. And uh, step number three to success is look after yourself. Eat good food. Get some exercise every day. And socialize as much as you can right now. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. And I will talk to you soon.